Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player and whistle player. Happy New Year to all of you, 2019, here we go. I thought I'd kick off the year with an introduction to tin whistles. Now tin whistles, penny whistles, Irish whistles, however you choose to call them, um, they are really cool and quite versatile instruments and you've all expressed your interest in them. So, here we go. to the family of fipple flutes. Uh, those are the flutes where the sound is created with this window here. And their defining characteristic is that they have six holes. And the difference between a whistle and a recorder is that the recorder has a thumb hole, whereas a whistle does not. And recorders also have an extra seventh hole for your little pinky finger. This enables the recorder to be a fully chromatic instrument, whereas the whistle is a diatonic instrument. So where do tin whistles actually come from? Well, fipple flutes, flutes from this family, have actually been found up to an estimated 81,000 years old. Uh, but tin whistles as we know them kind of started being produced in the 1840s by Mr. Clark. And this is a Clark whistle, though obviously not from the 1840s. Um, he was producing them in Manchester in England. They could be produced very cheaply and people would buy them to make music at home and it's no surprise that they really caught on. And I'm not saying that that was the only origin of the whistle but that was one of the first places we started seeing it being mass produced. And since then the whistle has developed in all kinds of keys and models and geysers and has become a staple part of the folk scene. So nowadays it's used a lot in Irish, Celtic, English, Scottish, also American and South African folk music. So if we look at the design of some different whistles, what they all have in common is that they are pipes with six holes. These three that I have are all made of metal, but you can actually also get PVC ones. There are really nice ones made by Susato. I used to have one, but I lost it at a Kaylee. And you can also get wooden ones. They sound really beautiful, but for me, it's a bit too confusing between whistle and recorder. So I prefer these metal ones. I did used to think that all whistles were cylindrical, but then I came across the Clark whistles, which are also conical. So yeah, that's another difference. The Clark whistles are one piece and they're kind of stopped with wood at the end. The generation whistles are one piece, but they have a separate plastic head joint. Chieftain ones, which are kind of like my professional whistles, are fully metal, but this is a tunable one, so you can pull the head joint in and out. And in terms of makes, you've got your ones like your Generations and your Clarks, and there are lots of others. They tend to be pretty cheap, kind of like 10 euros maybe. The Chieftain whistles, which I used to perform with, are more expensive. They're like, more like 100 to 150 euros. They're much heavier, more robustly made, and a big difference is the width of the bore. If you just compare my slightly squashed, very thin generation whistle with this big, sturdy, wide chieftain, bit of a sound comparison for you. So the wider chieftain is much, much, much louder. Another amazing thing about whistles is that you can buy them in pretty much any key. So the key of a whistle refers to its lowest note. Uh, this is an E flat whistle, so is E flat. And if you lift your fingers one by one, you hear the scale of E flat. D. G. 
even low D, the low whistle. Now this is really handy if you play with other people. Whistles are diatonic and that means they're very at home in some keys and it's very awkward in others. Now imagine you're playing with a group of people and they want to play a tune you know in a different key than you're used to. Doesn't matter, you just pick up a different whistle. So here I have whistles in G, F, E flat, D and C. I've misplaced my B flat whistle and then low G and low D. And maybe it's actually nice just to show you how to play the notes. So I'll put them up here. And to get to the next octave, you overblow. To play the C natural, you play it like this. But if you overblow it, you get the high D. Because physics. Now, of course, it's possible to play chromatically on a whistle. These are open holes, so you can do anything with them. That's either with forked fingering, so you could do a B flat like this, or with half holes. Oh yes, the low whistle, obviously, big low flutes have always existed, but these became really popular kind of from the 60s, 70s. That was when they started to be produced. And oh, I just love these. I play a lot of medieval music on these as well. It sounds really nice. Especially with the big whistles, a lot is talked about grip. Now, I am classically trained as a recorder player, where I play a lot of big instruments, so I use um, a recorder playing grip with the ends of my fingers. A lot of people use what's called a piper's grip, which is where you put your fingers like this across the holes, and you kind of use the middle part of your fingers um, to cover them. Personally, I find this difficult because I have kind of small bit skinny fingers and I find they don't cover the holes and I'm used to this. But if you use the Piper's grip, then that's fine. Do what is comfortable and works for you. So what music can you play on your marvelous collection of tin whistles? As I said, folk music, I suggest going to thesession.org. This is an online resource for pretty much every Irish folk tune ever. You can find the sound files and the letters and the sheet music. Uh, yes. There are also loads of uh, pop songs that use whistles. Uh, for example, a bit of Simon and Garfunkel. time favourite. I genuinely, genuinely love Titanic. I get a lot of people asking me, am I allowed to try this kind of music on my whistle? Am I allowed to play this song? And my answer is, of course. And as a little side note, a couple of years ago, I did a project with Irish composer Dara Kearns Hayes, and we were exploring the whistles as um, contemporary instruments. <laughs> We made some tutorials on extended techniques specifically for whistles and Dara, as well as a bunch of other composers, wrote new pieces that I performed. Uh, maybe you're interested, so I'm going to link that all down there in the description below. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Over here is a link to the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel and in the description is another link to the Team Recorder web shop where you can order my debut album. Uh, I don't think I play any whistle on it though. Up here is a tutorial on how to play folk music and I think that's everything. Have a great day. Bye!